Hey guys, so earlier this year, Microsoft introduced that the E5 security add-on was now available to subscribers of Business Premium. This upgrade provides small businesses enterprise-grade security protections without the enterprise-grade price tag. So in this video, I want to walk you through all of what's included so you understand the security enhancements that you'd be getting as part of that SKU, but also some of the business solutions that it solves for so you can start to talk about this as a potential upgrade for your existing customers. Also link in the video description my blog posts, which will have this slide deck here you can use as well too in white label for your customer conversations. Let's go ahead and dive in. Okay guys, so diving in here, the deck I'm showcasing to you here is from Microsoft directly. I think it's pretty good though to showcase both the business use cases to the customer as well as the pricing breakdowns. The fundamental thesis though, as we dive in, is around communicating to the customer that security is an ever moving target and we've seen a massive rise of attacks in the past few years more so also around the level of sophistication due to things like AI. Coupled with that is a lot of complexity as it relates to just how are you managing all the various security alerts, the regulatory compliance that you have today, but also the various security tools you might be putting into place to try to protect your organization. So when we think about that, that's really a big leading statement as to why you might start to look at something like an E5. We have maybe best of breed tools in all of these different solution areas for email security, device security, user security, and so forth. And the big problem with that is they don't naturally communicate with each other. Additionally, as a practitioner, you have to go in and start to stitch these things together in order to understand maybe an attack chain that's occurring within the organization. So when we think about that, attackers more so are thinking in this graphical view of how can I work my way through an organization and compromise different types of systems, such as getting a foothold by sending a phishing email to then have a door, an entryway into the endpoint, which then extends into the user and then gets me into you know, the data that I want in order to carry out some type of attack that leads to data exfiltration, ransomware, wire fraud, whatever it might look like for them on the back end. So when we talk about this E5 suite, it's really taking a look at, you know, not everything's best of breed when we talk about all the individual solutions, but by default, they all communicate, they all correlate and talk to each other and now they have you know, large language models behind them and AI that's also enhancing the level of intelligence behind detecting suspicious or malicious behavior. Effectively here, as we'll get into, it's very cost effective comparatively speaking to if you were to move from business premium into E5 as a whole. And then while they're not all best of breed solutions, a lot of these security products are recognized in the Gardner upper right quadrant, obviously for things like endpoint protection. So when we talk about this, I won't cover this slide in depth, but effectively here, you're getting all of these add-on plans and they protect across you know, those suite of services such as your email security, identity, uh, endpoint, and so forth. And here, you know, one of the things I like to always highlight is the value that you do get in P 2 alone is quite significant for detecting risky users, risky sign-ins, which is largely where we see a lot of attacks gravitating towards today outside of your basic email security that you'd want to have in place. So we'll cover these more in depth as we keep going here, but it's a lot of these add-on plans here that contribute also to a lot of cost savings that you get as part of this add-on that you can now bolt on to your business premium plan. That's traditionally, if you do an annual, it's $22 a seat, you're now getting this E5 security suite, which is $12 bundled, even just having P2 before as an add-on, which some of you might have because of the advanced telemetry you get for the sign-in logs and risk protections and things like that, um, was $9 itself. So combining all of these different factors is quite significant. And if you're not as familiar with these other add-on plans, we'll be covering them in a high level as part of this video. The value proposition here is really taking you know, your base level protections you have in business premium, like conditional access, moving that into much more advanced protections that also include you know, reactive type of remediation or investigation that's just naturally prompted by what is included in E5 security, such as risk-based conditional access where you can actually block a user, reset their password, make them prompt for MFA if they're detected as high risk, as an example. But then you have all of these other protections that you get as part of that SKU that relate back to identity governance, access controls, 
as well as things like identity management for uh, making sure that you have just-in-time access for privileged roles like global administrators. The big thing as we'll be unpacking here with the rest of these offerings is that they do provide this level of communication between each other where they can correlate alerts across the attack chain so you can better identify you know, where attackers at in their journey if they breached a user and so forth. So a lot of these here that you get you know, have automated response capabilities that don't need an actual human to be involved to start to lock things down and respond to alerts. And then naturally, we'll also get into this Defender for Cloud apps, which has traditionally not been in reach for SMB, which is Microsoft's CASB solution or Cloud App Security Broker, which is allowing you to identify all the applications being accessed on your network, provide them a risk score, and also provide you some capabilities for actions, which comes into play most heavily today when we start talking about AI tools in use, which we'll get into as well. So I think this chart depicts the good comparison. I think that it's still lacking, especially as it relates to the identity and access control solutions that you do get. So you can take a screenshot of this. And again, I'll be linking this slide deck so you can have this as well too. But as you can see, there's a lot of additional protections that we do get as part of that E5 security bundle. When we talk about the various challenges and how you can start to communicate this with your customers, we have this concept here of you know, silo tools again, and I think this is probably the most powerful part about adopting this type of solution here is this concept of automatic attack disruption. This is effectively saying that Microsoft can correlate all these different signals from these tools, has their own bank of telemetry coming from all the organizations they have under the, their environment to detect for things that are malicious in nature and they can actually perform automated response, which is typically what your SOC team is doing or you're doing manually today. And this is giving you, you know, enhanced level protections at the speed of which that you would want to lock things down be before you know, these attacks become a larger incident or uh, loss for a company. When we talk about managing risk exposure and you know, going back to that point around how can you start to lock things down across the organization, you have this concept where an attacker is you know, maneuvering through an organization laterally to try to get access to certain sensitive files, sensitive data, trick users, whatever it might be. But often they're appealing through multiple layers of weaknesses within the company, whether that's the application layer, user layer, device layer, whatever it might be. And so a lot of these connected elements here of access and things like that present to you exposure to critical assets that you might think are locked down, but there's often a gateway or back door that attackers are looking to get into. We've seen a significant rise in social engineering attacks, especially with AI coming into play here. I think there's a statistic that said that 40% of all business email compromise in 2024 was actually uh, AI based in the sense that it was written uh, the messages, the email messages were written with AI tools. And so a lot of these phishing attempts, you know, and business email compromise involve lateral phishing. So trying to compromise the user and then move across the organization to perform things like wire fraud, like in this case, in this example. Whereas with the E5 security suite, you're getting those signals from across, you know, all these different tenants, not just your own but it's also using large language model-based email compromise detections here uh, for what you would normally see that's baked into Defender for Office 365. And this gives you additional protections here when we talk about that continuation of the attack chain. We also see this rise in phishing attempts as it relates to not only in email, but now specifically within Teams, some type of mail bombing attempt where an attacker will subscribe the user to a ton of different legitimate subscription um, emails and their inbox gets flooded. They then reach out impersonating the help desk in Teams, asking them to download a remote connection agent and then further compromising that user or that device. So this is giving you those additional protections that span beyond your email tools and into your collaboration tools with Teams. And they also correlate back to, again to that, that full attack chain. And then here I was mentioning this, this new cloud app security broker solution is typically something been out of reach here. You might be using a networking tool to try to solve for this, but thinking about the shadow IT within the organization, thinking about how those apps are configured, maybe the weaknesses that they do have, where they could be compromised and could then, you know, the, the attacker could move laterally into your other tools. 
But additionally, within here, you know, we have a lot of uh, lack of visibility into the applications that our, our customers are, are leveraging here. And this kind of gets into the AI equation. We can make the natural assumption that all of our users are leveraging AI apps, but you don't have native protections in order to understand what applications they're using and also anything to restrict their usage as, as a whole. So this is actually a really powerful part about combining Defender for Cloud apps with Defender for Endpoint uh, protections that you would get as part of Defender for Endpoint Plan 2, where you can actually sanction and unsanction applications to say that I don't want my users using ChatGPT, as an example, and they wouldn't be able to access that in their browser as part of that protection. So it's a great way to get them into, you know, approved work streams, compliant work streams, especially as it relates to potential data exfiltration, whether it's malicious or not, um, into these public large language models. And then the other one here, obviously with Entropy 2, we get a lot of identity protection considerations going on, um, but also when we talk about just basic change management, when thinking about new employees onboarding, lateral movement within the organization, access into applications and files to do their job. Often that's very cumbersome, it's a very manual process today. And so Microsoft not only provides these protections at the identity layer, but they're also providing you a lot of automation capabilities and self-service capabilities to have employees get access into the information they need very quickly, but then also be able to govern that over time where if somebody leaves the organization or they move departments, they have, you know, quote unquote, a least permissive model into the files and folders that they would need to do their job. And we see a lot of cases, there's a lot of content sprawl um, based off those movements that you can't really control because of just a lack of resources and how much time that would take. The other big piece here, you know, is really related to the telemetry you're getting from sign-ins and being able to respond quickly to things like impossible travel. Um, token theft is a great example of this as well too, where Microsoft's gonna be pulling in a lot of this telemetry here for how can you respond quickly to these types of events such as blocking a user account, rotating credentials, the things that you normally do as part of an incident response. They can actually do uh, very quickly here with these automated protections what you get additional from the signals, but also with conditional access to actually respond uh, versus just having um, those protections for you know, channeling in different sign-in activity. The last one here is related also if you're running a hybrid environment with local Active Directory. Defender for Identity is uh, available here for protecting your local AD environment, but also for sending those signals into the Defender Admin Portal. So it's very powerful in the sense of extending additional protections locally while you're still running that hybrid ecosystem. And then finally here, you know, ransomware is obviously still a very big, you know, attack that we see out in the wild. 80% of all ransomware attacks are against small businesses here. You have a lot of capabilities for, you know, what is included in Defender for Endpoint Plan 2, which is looking again at that multi-layered signal um, that you're getting not only from the endpoint, but also from the user record, applications, email. Um, but we also have attack disruption capabilities at the endpoint layer as well too. And you get these capabilities that also include some threat hunting that you can begin to perform to get into more of that blue team proactive security management within your tenants. So that's all the business solutions I wanted to cover here. There are some additional resources I'll link in my blog post as part of this. And over the next few weeks to month, I'll be unpacking some of the tactics that you can begin to leverage as part of those customer conversations you have to upsell them into this solution. Okay guys, that's everything I had for you today. Definitely comment below with any questions you had about the E5 add-on, and be sure to check out that blog post for that customer deck that you could start using today. I'll see you guys next week.